Hey everybody. Excuse the background noise and the big mess, but anyways, I got another e machines computer in here. It's another part system. Paid 15 bucks for it at the computer works store. And this e machine, like the majority of the others, doesn't work. This one here, along with many others that I bought, have the dreaded Bestech ATX 25012E power supply in them. Kind of hard to do this with one hand. Okay. So we look inside here. Overall, the main board looks fine, but I tested it with a different power supply in the computer work store, and it didn't post. So we know that the power supply has murdered the board. I mean, this would have been a decent board for a refurb system. I could have put a um, 800 front side bus CPU on this thing, because it looks like it has that yeah, it has the 865 chipset on it, so it would accept a 800 front side bus P4. Let's see if we can look up here inside the power supply. When I had this thing in the store, I did notice inside the unit that there was a capacitor in that 5 volt standby circuit that was bloated. So we know the 5 volt standby rail is messed up bad. Which is the problem with these power supplies. For those who aren't familiar with these power supplies, these Bestech ATX 250 12E power supplies, they have a very, very crappy 5 volt standby rail. Probably the most poorly designed 5 volt standby rail you can get in a power supply. I've seen cheap power supplies that have better standby rails than this. Look here at the specs. I think you can see them, it's hard to tell, but. Anyways, that's the spec label. And this unit is based on an older design with a minus 5 volt rail. The Bestech ATX 250 12Z is a newer design and also has a better quality 5 volt standby rail. Okay, here's the spec label on the 12Z power supply. This unit here is only about three years old. And notice no five, minus five volt rail. Newer design unit. The 12 volt rail is 14 amps. Five volt rail is 25 amps. 3.3 volt rail is 18 amps. Minus 12 volt rail is 0.8 amps. And the five volt standby rail is two amps with a peak load of 2.5 amps. So I mean, it's pretty decent for the type of power supply it is. It's a little 250 watt power supply. It came out of a compact that was made in 2007. So this thing only has about, I would say, three years of service on it, if that much. It depends on how much it was used. It did have a little bit of dust in it. However, the, I mean, the inside of it looks fairly new. Look here at the 12E power supply. The 12 volt rail is 13 amps. 5 volt rail is 25 amps. 3.3 volt rail is 20 amps. Minus 5 is 0 0.3 amps. Minus 12 is 0 0.8. 5 volt standby is 2 amps. So, I mean, they're similar. Some of the rails had the same amperage outputs. The 12 volt rail is a little bit stronger on this one. And you can actually get a pretty decent view inside of this one without even opening it up. There's one capacitor on the output. Not sure which rail it goes to, but I notice it is a little bit bulged, but not bad. I'll probably go ahead and swap it out. Best Tech decided to switch from Jamicon capacitors to T Pose or some other generic. Some really unknown generic. I guess it's, I'm not sure what brand it is. Okay, it's Capzone. Actually, they've, they've actually used these for quite some time as their primary capacitors but now they decide to use them on their outputs and evidently Capzone may have 
some defect defective capacitors. I'm not sure, but anyways, back to the point. On this power supply, like I said earlier, it has a faulty 5 volt standby rail. Let's go ahead and take this power supply out and open it up and have a look. Okay, now I have the power supply out of the machine and I have the cover taken off. Let's have a look. Notice the capacitor right here. Got a bulging top there. These capacitors actually look fine. This is very unusual. Very, very unusual. Normally, on these power supplies, they are so wrecked up that this one capacitor right here, the little one, nearest the transformer, is usually blown out of the board. And the one next to it usually has a bloated top. But if you look in here, you can notice these black, these blacker looking spots on the PCB. This unit has been getting hot. That resistor has been getting hot. Notice over here. Another hot spot. This power supply has got some serious problems. Serious, serious problems. But I believe since all the caps are still in place on this unit, I might be able to plug it up and we can actually voltage test the standby rail just to give you an idea of how bad it's over -volting. by the way these units when their final standby rails mess up due to a bad capacitor their standby rails can jump as high as 12 volts or more keep in mind this is supposed to be 5 volt standby rail a 5 volt standby rail and the output voltage is going to as high as 12 volts I mean, you're supposed to have 12 volts over here on the, you know, the 12 volt rail, not the 5 volt standby rail. And what I mean by the standby rail being so poorly designed, I've read online about these units, and they say that the only component that's really even controlling the switcher for, you know, the standby rail is an electrolytic capacitor. That is something you do not want to have. I mean, these capacitors, even the higher quality ones, can still get degrade over time. And this computer that had this power supply was probably manufactured, I would say, 2004. So you're looking at six to seven years of operation, which, I mean, they're lucky this thing actually lasted this long. After so many years of operation, the capacitor goes out, and of course, the 5 volt standby rail goes crazy. And this 5 volt standby rail does not even have short circuit protection. It's that bad. No short circuit protection. Nothing. No over voltage. No short circuit. I mean, all the other rails have that, but not the 5 volt standby rail. I mean, if the 5 volt standby rail actually had these two things, I mean, it wouldn't be destroying motherboards on a regular basis. Let's have a look inside of another Bestech ATX 2B12E power supply. Okay. Now I have two Bestech ATX 2BD12E power supplies side by side. This one here, like I say, it blew its um, little capacitor that used to be in front of the transformer. It's gone. I don't know what's happened to it. It's gone. You notice that the capacitor, let me get this thing in focus. Notice that the capacitor up next to it, get an angle here. You might be able to see that it's kind of bulged out bulged up on top of me but notice the capacitor here is fine nothing wrong with it but yet on this unit the two capacitors near the transformer are fine but the capacitor near the heat sink is swelled on top it's kind of like an opposite issue here but I believe it's from the same problem if you notice here on both units they both have been very hot I mean, you can tell obviously by the burn marks on the PCB. And if you take a look here, let me zoom in, if I can. There is where the capacitor used to go. Look how black the board is. I mean, this is this is bad. I mean, that's what the board should look like. That color there, but 
It's that darkish looking color. That's not good at all. Not good at all. Now I'm going to put a cover back on this unit. And let's see if we can get a reading off of the rail. 5 volt standby rail. Hopefully it won't smoke or explode. Notice our 5 volt rail is high. You can hear the sound the power supply is making. Not good at all. Listen to as I try to turn on the power supply. The fan does not spin. When I short the green and black wires. Which, by the way, is the circuit to tell the power supply to come on. So as you know, the power supply is in bad shape. Five volt standby rail is a bit high, and it doesn't even turn on. That's bad. <laughs> that is bad. So of course that power supply is pretty much dead. <laughs>